Hello. Am I audible? I think yes. Yeah, hello. So good evening, everybody here, and welcome to Advanced Cell Webinar Series. Uh, should I start now if, or, or wait for minutes? I think it's four we need to start now. So um, I will start with the question, can type one diabetes be cured by stem cells? It's a big question. So the whole webinar is based on what are those stem cells? What are different kinds of stem cells option here? And which is the best one for the treatment of type one diabetes according to the clinical trial studies? And what are the current status of the treatment options? and how the cellular, cellular uh, therapy-based company involving with the device for the treatment of uh, type 1 diabetes that is for uh, uh, based on the stem cells and how uh, personalized medicine would help for the treatment of type 1 diabetes. So we'll start. So that's why my topic here is stem cell as a functional cure for type 1 diabetes. Where is the hope? Yes, I is there, and you can through whole webinar you will see this. There is a hope for type one diabetes treatment through stem cells. So introduction. I will stop. Everybody know that type one diabetes, which leads to the destruction of pancreatic beta cells, and that causing the insufficient insulin production. And according to the diabetes, international diabetes population, there are about 500 million diabetes to 80 years old. And this data was recorded in 2017. <coughs> India alone having 77 million. And this is number to be expected to be increased by 700 million by 2045. Among those, Number of children and adults, let's adults since about the, up to 19, 20 years old with type 1 diabetes had reached up to 1 million. And also, according to the data given, this is around 98,000 children and also below 15 years of age, and about 128,000 below 20 years having this type 1 diabetes with their with severe complications and deteriorating their quality of life. And India alone is about 16,000 incident cases below 15 years of age, it has been reported. And thus we can say that the, it's the fastest growing global health emergencies for this tree in India as well. And as I told you that going to be increased by 700 billion by 2045. So as you know, or we just, as you know that, and already described that is a metabolic disorder and it's kind of autoimmune destruction of insulin secreting pancreatic beta cells. And hyperglycemia is the common problem of this diabetes, type one diabetes due to lack of or low insulin secretion. What we discuss about the, the figure of type 1 diabetes among the adults diagnosed with the diabetes, about 5 to 6% people having the type 1 diabetes, the type 2 diabetes, according to the American Association. And this number up, reached up to 1 million among the children of age uh, 0 to 20 years. So first we discuss about the pathogenesis of type 1 diabetes. Main causes beta cell death, as you all know, because here innate immunity is, is the um, general immunity, <coughs> that is the reaction in our body with this uh, and general antigen by adaptive immunity is the specific antigen reaction with the specific antigen. So these interactions dysregulate in type 1 diabetes. And this causes the beta cell death, 
and how it is. Like you know that CD4 cells involved in that, CD8 lymphocytes, natural killer cells, and B lymphocytes, followed by dendritic cells and macrophages. And these immune cells secrete the, some factors we call it pro-inflammatory cytokines, which gradually inflame the pancreas and thus uh, gradually beta cell death after. And in this case, during this death of the beta cells, patients' blood glucose level regulation phase and there is a complication arise and in danger also for the life expectancy and the quality of life. And other evidence also saying that some genetic susceptibility environmental factors <coughs> also increase the risk of this immune disorder type 1 diabetes. But it's still not clear. But scientifically, we have to look for or we have have that efforts in that area to prevent the beta cell loss and improve the quality of life with type 1 diabetes. So this is the figure showing then how this immune reaction occurs, innate and adaptive immunity during the development of type 1 diabetes. I'm not going very detailed into it because only the main point I have highlighted here in pancreas, there is a dendritic cell, everybody knows that, and they capture the uh, process, the beta cell antigen after the cell death. And that's the loaded dendritic cells, which are uh, into the lymph nodes, and they prime the beta cell antigen specific T cells. And also, macrophages present in the pancreas also promote the activation of the dendritic cell and T cells which causes the pro-inflammatory cytokine secretion. And with B cells present in the pancreas, the lymph nodes, where they, um, that presenting the beta cell antigen to the <coughs> to islet specific T cells and secrete autoantibodies. So these all events activate the macrophages, then right H cells, NK cells, T cells in the pancreas and destroy the beta cell with the various effector molecules. What are the main consequences of these factors? So release of autoantigens, which is presented by antigen presenting cells, activation of CD4, D8, NK cell. Once uh, T cells activate, they differentiate into Th1, Th2, and Th17 and regulatory cells, and Th1 and Th17. 17 cells destroy the beta cells and in the development of type 1 diabetes. And also it is found from the literature that CD8 cell also responsible for the development of type 1 diabetes because it secretes interferon gamma and TNF alpha as a tumor necrosis factor, which, which is the inflammatory molecule. So current treatment option for type 1 diabetes, as you know, that exogenous insulin supply is the only option to balance the glucose level at present, and it is standard treatment. But, these, uh, but this exogenous insulin supply is not very adequate that provide the physical, physiological response and cannot prevent the progressiveness of the degeneration of beta cells, I like beta cells. And thus, patients might experience hypoglycemic episodes. So current therapy of type 1 diabetes having the significant limitation because insulin injection is the first line of treatment. And there is also, I told you, we discussed that it's not giving the adequate or accurate physiological response and also the long-term dependency to maintain the blood glucose management. So that's why, and long-term um, use or usage of this insulin may also cause the resistance, uh, in insulin resistance if you go for the long-term usage. Second line treatment is the handle transplant or eyelid beta cell transplant also there, but the 
there is the donor ability is also very shortage. And also you have to use the immunoreceptive drugs, which is the uh, also for the long term, also not good for your health. And also, and the surgery risk is there. So that's why we need some alternative other than the current treatment. That is only option is here. This is cellular therapy or stem cell therapy. That's the reason I'm saying we need a stem cell based therapy in diabetes. Because also you know that insulin, price of insulin increasing every year. And <clears throat> we have to uh, depend on the insulin injection for a long time. This creates the resistance and also not uh, sometimes uh, also not this uh, insulin is not mimicking the same what we, we have producing in, uh, in our bodies. So they cause sometimes reactive hypoglycemia. So that's the reason stem cell therapy <clears throat> cell therapy is needed. <laughs> also, the beta cell uh, transplant also available, but there is a donor ability is there, and usage of immunosuppressive drug for a long time is also not good. So only option here is the stem cell-based therapy. So we have a different type of stem cells, as you all know about this either induced pluripotent cells or naive uh, mesenchymal stem cells there. And all studies are going on for that for, uh, on, the, on type one diabetes patient and, and give the positive results so far. I will compile all these studies in this webinar so we can go through it later. So why I've chosen the cells, uh, stem cells? Because the human body is made up of cells, not the drugs. So, and the beginning, the cells start from the stem cells. It is the origin of life. So coming more basic in this, um, uh, about the stem cells, as you all know, stem cells are the foundation of every organ and tissue in our body. And two important properties, self-renewable self -renewable and the plasticity. They replicate and plasticity means it can differentiate in various other cell types which is required, which is present in our body. A uh, little bit more about the, how it rise, uh, human embryogenesis. As you know that I'm a sperm and egg, um, when a sperm cells penetrate egg, it, there is a genetic information exchange and the formation of the gigote. And 23 chromosome from the sperm and also combined with the 23 chromosome of the egg, total is 46 chromosome and that is called gigote. And when gigote form, it start dividing and multiplying at initial 20 to 24 hours. I mean, within 24 hours, very important of their rapid cell division because um, because this first eight weeks of development of fertilization is very important and it's transformed a single cell into a, an organism like multi-level body plan. Like here you can say totipotent cell day three, we call it. And then blastocyte day six, there is the inner cell mass, blastocytes. And this, and this is when this inner cell mass, we take out from the, from jagal, I mean blastocyst stage, and culture outside the body, then we call it the pluripotent stem cells. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> it is up. <coughs> Types of stem cells, as you know, the, according to the source, either embryon from the embryo or from the adult body. So adult that will be from different organ, we call mesenchymal stem cells, hematopoid, that is the blood source, neural, epidermal, hepatic, and pancreatic. But more common is the well-studied so far is the hematopoid and the mesenchymal stem cells. And for according to the uh, 
type of differentiation. It may be totipotent, pluripotent, multipotent, impotent. I already talked about during the stage of fibrogenesis first the totipotent, pluripotent, multipotent, and unipotent. So it's more significant difference between the totipotent stem cell and pluripotent stem cell. Totipotent stem cells is the four cell stage, and it can differentiate into any cell types in your body, but Pluripotent stem cells is the it is from the blastocyst and differentiate into three germ layers: mesosome, exosome, endosome. And the multipotent stem cells into the uh, that differentiate into speci specialized lineage of the cells and difficult to isolate as well. And under is induced pluripotent stem cell. It is all genetic reprogramming that is we do and this is discovered first time everybody know Yamanaka in 2006 produced the pluripotent stem cell from the mouse neonatal and adult fibroblast culture by adding uh, transcription factors that is all uh, lab experimental experimental um, you say uh, uh, culture and introduce that factor transcription factor that can give the induced pluripotent stem cells that behaves like embryonic stem cell. Another is Bell studies, and so far lots of clinical trial going on on, on, in, on not only diabetes, but other indication as well is the mesenchymal stem cells. It's very safe so far, and there is no requirement of matching. So it's also the good, uh, import, I mean, say, characteristics of the cells. And there are different kind of stem cells, mesenchymal cells, maybe xenofree, that we are no, no using any uh, animal uh, for product for uh, isolating these stem cells, or hypoxic mesenchymal that is growing the stem cell in a very low oxygen level. So uh, as I talked about, there is the option for beta cell replacement therapy, and we have um, uh, I've also the part of that clinical trial long back in 2000, the Enman protocol, where we are under clinical trial for type one diabetes, and we had found a good result because uh, very promising results. Um, uh, we isolate the cells from the donor pancreas, pancreas, and then we culture or isolate, not culture, sorry, isolate the uh, islet cells from the pancreas and then infuse into the uh, uh, recipient type 1 diabetes patient. And this we have found that 70% of patient which is on, uh, on insulin, they don't require any insulin injection after two years. But long-term sustainability was very less. Still has need a insulin after uh, two to five years. So this approach is, has some limitation because we need to generate the adequate number of islet cells, which can actually control the, I mean, achieving the normal glycemic level when infused. And also we need a cadaveric pancreas. This is very a limitation here. And also we had to, um, on the, uh, we have to, on uh, patient has to, uh, immunosuppressive because, um, because it's uh, isolating from the different source, I mean, from different individuals. So we need immunosuppressive as well. Other cell-based technology evolved that I already talked about the um, beta cell from the uh, donor pancreas. And another is the pluripotent stem cell is the switch source of beta cells because it's an embryonic, during the embryonic development to the blastocyst state, we take out the inner cell mass and then we culture those cells which is very uh, potent one because it can differentiate faster uh, into beta cells. And these beta cells can be cultured in the lab and then it can be and make it mature. Here is the uh, for 
generating beta cells in the blue protein cell has a very um, I mean, um, has a very challenging because you have to make the beta cell functional and mature. This is already done by the Melton lab in Howard cell in there. We are uh, almost in the, that phase to make it mature and functional and polyhormonal beta cell. So uh, as I told you, pure protein stem cell is also one of the good source of for uh, generating islet cells because there is a progressive differentiation already recorded or you say already established to endoderm to pancreatic bird cells and endocrine pancreas cells and then beta cells. And this all depends upon the cell signaling. So we, we almost achieved that part to generate beta cells, but the, uh, what the challenge is to make it mature. But still it's already in that phase to get a mature beta cell from the lab. <laughs> so, so beta cell when differentiate should be mature and polyhormal. So it, then only we can get that good result that infuse in the um, in patient. Other company that is involved in Thai Pidin, uh, uh, this is based on this uh, pluriproton stem cell into beta cells. And this is Botec Pharmaceuticals, Novo Nordisk, CRISPR. They are already in clinical phase, they cross the phase one safety profile, and they are in phase two clinical trial, and they are very positive about the, these uh, 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 stem cell, which is uh, protected with the device. So it cannot attack with the other immune rejection or something like that. So. This is, this is a great achievement for those cellular therapies companies working in this area to generate uh, beta cells from the pluripotent stem cells. Via site is also one of them. And this is the company which is have different products. It is in US and they are, pro they are generating the pancreatic islet progenitor cells and they put in the device. I will show you here another slide. <laughs> this is a immune protective device. And other is the CRISPR therapeutic. What they're doing, they are generating a cell line by uh, manipulating this uh, immune rejection in a, um, that, that base. That means the generating those cell line, which is not attacked by the new cells when it is given to the um, patient. So this is, you can see here the device with this pan, um, pancreatic islet progenitor cells. <coughs> and also they have used CYT4 cell line, which is developed by Viocyte company in US and it is in, in immunoinvasive stem cell line and have potential to give the more better uh, results in type 1 diabetes. So we'll have the uh, some clinical trial and review in the following slides. As you as you know that I've already discussed that YSI, Vertex, other company which is under cross the phase 1 trial for type 1 diabetes, they're under phase 2 and phase 3 clinical trial. So um, this they are saying they are preserving the beta cell mass. That is very important in type one diabetes to preserve beta cell uh, mass. That is uh, the loss will be less. And the other company they are using on uh, using the mesenchymal stem cells for type one diabetes. I will discuss more on mesenchymal as well. And you have seen that they how they are using the bone marrow, metabolic stem cells, plus mesenchymal stem cells for the treatment of type 1 diabetes in different countries. And the all infusion mode is IV. So the outcome is so far, they have done 10 studies and they have studied the outcome is they are significant increase in C-peptide in 12 months follow-up 
And for bone marrow, hematopoietic stem cell they have used also, and they also see the C peptide significant increase in 12 month follow ups. And other factor that's FUNC, which is also reflects the average of our, uh, uh, plasma glucose level in past three months. And they have studied in different uh, trials. And the 12 month follow up, they say significant decrease in HP1C as well, both in the case of bone marrow, hepatopoietic stem cells, and mesenchymal stem cells. So uh, at the ZIST, or maybe the baseline that MSC therapy and bone marrow, hepatopoietic stem cell therapy, giving the very positive result in these, those clinical trials. And in 12 months follow-up, the result significant decrease in HPNC and also increase the C-peptide level as well. And also the requirement of insulin, excluded insulin requirement also decreased significantly. In, in, they also reported in, in patients in these studies, both either uh, bone marrow and mesenchymal stem cell therapy. So both having results. So far, they haven't reported any uh, adverse reaction for using the mesenchymal stem cell, which is considered as a allogenic stem cells, and hematopoietic stem cells considered as a first present. They have uh, no such any um, life your adverse reaction. So, um, as you uh, as we uh, know, the what's the benefits of this? Why uh, more important in mesenchymal? It is well studied so far, and also the mesenchymal stem cell source is plenty, even from the umbilical cord, from the fat, and the expansion is also very easy as compared to bone marrow or stem cells derived uh, mesenchymal. So it has a um, uh, one property as you know, immunomodulatory property, and it is well studied. This will preserve the, whatever the beta cell, residual beta cell in type one diabetes patient is, they're preserving the beta, uh, residual beta cells. So due to this immunomodulatory uh, therapeutic action of the mesenchymal stem cells. So uh, I'm more focused on mesenchymal, why? Because it's, I say, immunomodulatory has no um, uh, any uh, adverse actions. No, there is no requirement of matching as well. And also well studied that it can preserve the beta cell mass uh, during the onset of type 1 diabetes. So because it's also showing that uh, all the studies so far that HB1C and C-peptide improvement in the patient of type 1 diabetes. Uh, also, one of the studies shows that definitely, initially, the bone marrow, uh, bone marrow stem cells have been shown more prominent, promising result in type 1 diabetes, but co-infusion with the mesenchymal stem cell is better and better than the conventional insulin therapy because it increased the peptide level as well as the uh, decreasing the HB1C level in type 1 diabetes. So we have also noted that uh, these studies also reveal that the early transplant of MSCs has more beneficial than the late stage because it control the um, uh, pro uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines by secreting the anti-inflammatory cytokine at IL-4, IL-10, if beta for 12 months, and also recommended for exercise after addition of when you infuse the MSC transplant. This will significantly decrease the ashpency for the longer time, and there is a stability in their, their levels. So, um, because it's controlling the uh, 
pro-inflammatory cytokines by generating the anti-inflammatory cytokines like L4, L10, and TGF-beta. So what, um, uh, just a little bit more about the possible mechanism, how it is controlling the uh, immune, I mean, system during the onset of type 1 diabetes, that is stem cells. Because as you know, stem cell, I told you that there is a secretion of anti-inflammatory cytokines, which regulate the T cells. And this regulate T rank, which is very important to control the immune reaction in the pancreas and preserve the beta cell loss. And also that it will, uh, the stem cell um, stop the secretion of um, pro-inflammatory cytokines or T cell differentiation. So that will be checkpoint and thus the immune balance, immune tolerance in the pancreas and thus beta cell loss is prevented and then the secretion of insulin. Other uh, possible mechanism is that stem cell can generate the pancreatic progenitor cells and these progenitor cells have a polyhormone can having all the type of cell that is in the pancreas like alpha, beta, delta, and this make the organoids and these mature organoids or uh, islet or no, it can secrete insulin. So I'm just a little bit about more about the uh, next to the stem cell is the exosome. Exosome is the um, actually the it's it's a vesicle and this is a small vesicle nano sized particle about 20 nanometer to 100 nanometer which contain protein growth factors anti-inflammatory cytokines. So you can see the video here, how it is generated, the, how the exosome science is important for maintaining the immunomodulation or creating the immunomodulatory effect in the type one diabetes. So it's create endosomes and then accumulation of proteins, different kinds of proteins, lipids, messenger RNA, this is very important for giving the signal cell communication between the cells. <clears throat> and <clears throat> this, uh, discovered by Justin long back in 1981. And also the clinical trial going on diabetes for these exosomes, because this contains the growth factors, tissue regeneration capability, and also immunomodulatory reaction. <clears throat> These are the uh, regenerative and immunomodulatory effect of exosomes. but some, there is some limitation also. And also <clears throat> there's a personalized medicine is very important for treatment of type in there because selection of the right patient at the right time for the right treatment. So is this approach is very important for type one diabetes. That's why I uh, focus on precise medicine as well. Now it's coming up with that for type one diabetes treatment as well. So <clears throat> due to lack of time, the summarizing that it's a chronic metabolic disorder and we have different <clears throat> type of stem cells present to which, which is the now need of the uh, present scenario for the treatment of type and diabetes and various other cellular therapy based company working on it, coming up with the device for treatment of type one diabetes with the stem cells protected with the um, <clears throat> with the medical advice. <clears throat> and also they are 
Uh, we have also checked the efficacy and safety for the mesenchymal stem cells with the selected individuals. Also saying that bone marrow and uh, metabolic stem cell superior to the MSC, but various other studies also say the co-infusion of both bone marrow as well as mesenchymal giving long lasting effect by decreasing the HPNC and C peptide level in pre-men. And different studies so far, and um, uh, we had already mentioned this one for the um, uh, 20 patients to give insulin injection, and there is the this is all clinical trial data. That is, they are considering that definitely the bone marrow stem cell therapy and mesenchymal stem cell therapy reducing the HUNC levels and C peptide along with the um, some sort of exercise needed after infusion. The take home message, there is an improvement in C-peptide adjuvancy level and exogenous insulin requirement is lesser as when, once it is treated with the stem cell therapy. And um, we have a um, Hematopoietic stem cell option also, and mesenchymal stem cell option for the treatment of and study both of them well safe and tolerated in human as well. Another technology I told you, exosome therapy also coming up, which give the cell cell communication and reduce the inflammation in the pancreas, which is the onset of, due to the onset of type one diabetes. So thank you much, you have any question or uh, please, uh, we can discuss here. So, but at the end, definitely have a firm belief that we are made up of, we are not made up of drugs like insulin, we are made up of cells. So we have a belief that stem cell is functional cure for type 1 diabetes. So open for the discussion. If you have any question, please let me know. Or if you have, we have only one minute. Uh, it is a question that what type of stem cell transplant are you recommending? For, for my experience so far, we have seen the bone marrow therapy is also, uh, is uh, do, I mean, giving 